What's up, everybody? My name is Nathan, and I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I got something I need to, I would like to share with anyone and anybody that will come across this video and watch it. I'm doing this video because yesterday I seen the depravity of man at its absolute now worst. Yesterday, a certain group of people, not going to mention their name, decided to release a video depicting them burning a man alive inside of a cage and then throwing rocks or dropping rocks on him. The brutality of man is now getting to become like it was in the days of Noah. At first I wasn't even going to do a video. I was very bothered by it. But I figured it would be best just to stay out of it. Because I don't want to look like I'm getting involved with political things. But then this, the, the king of uh, Jordan, King Adullah, decides to retaliate by hanging two prisoners that they had captive. I don't care about their religion. I don't care about their race. I don't care about what they're accused of. What I care about is, is that I think for the first time in modern history, that a government just legally murdered, so blatantly legally murdered two people as a revenge killing for what was done to one of their own. Let me just state the fact. No government, no religion, no people, no one person should have the right to burn alive anyone. Nor should they have the right to take revenge and hang someone. See, what bothers me about the whole situation is, is that none of this would even be happening if they wasn't being misled by Satan the devil. This whole world is about to run off the tracks because Satan has thoroughly misled everyone. I'm going to read some quick scriptures real quick. I got some thoughts I want to bring out to help reinforce what I just said. I don't care what religion you are, what nationality you are, what country you're from. What I care about is sharing the truth with you. Because the truth can set you free. I want to be able to share why these things are happening. I want you to keep an open mind. And I want you to be willing to Look at what you think you know and what you think you've been, you know, what you think you know from history and what you've been taught by whatever religion you're in. Because it's time to face the facts. It's time to, it's time to see what Jehovah God has to say about this whole situation. Okay? So, let's start off. Let's start off by going to Luke chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 5 through 6. 5 and 6. It says, So he, meaning Satan the devil, brought him and showed him all the kingdoms 
of the inhabited earth in an instant of time. Then the devil said to him, I will give you all this authority and their glory because it has been handed over to me and I give it to whomever I wish. All the kingdoms of the earth, their glory, their majesty, their riches, from the dawn of time to God's kingdom gets here. Everything in between there. Satan showed Jesus and offered him and went as far as to say that they were handed to me and I can give them to whoever I wish. Okay. So let's uh, let the Bible speak on that some more. Turn your Bibles to Revelations chapter thirteen. Okay. It says, starting verse 1, it says, and it, and it stood still on the sand of the sea, and I saw a wild beast ascending out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, and on its horns ten diadems, but on its heads blasphemous names. Now the wild beast that I saw was like a leopard, but its feet were like those of a bear, and its mouth like, like a lion's mouth. And the dragon gave to the beast its power and its throne and its great authority. Do you know who the dragon is? Do you know who? All right. Well, back up one chapter, chapter. 12, verse 9, it says, So down the great dragon was hurled, the original serpent, the one called devil and Satan, who is what? Misleading the entire inhabited earth. He was hurled down to the earth, and his angels were hurled down with him. That's who the dragon is. Now, let's get a little bit more information on who this beast is, because... It's very important. I'm going to flip over to chapter 17. And start in verse 9, it says, This calls for a mind that has wisdom. The seven heads mean seven mountains, where the woman sits on top. And there are seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet arrived. But when he does arrive, he must remain a short while. And the wild beast that was not, but that was that was but is not, is also an eight king, but it springs from the seven and goes off into destruction. The ten horns that you saw mean ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom. That's fixing to happen. We got something coming. Going to be a shake up in the world powers. Ten kings are going to be set up. And it says, anyway, it says, These have one thought, so that they give their power and authority to the wild beast. These will battle with the lamb, but because he is lord of lords and king of kings, the lamb will conquer them. Also those with him who are called the chosen and faithful who do so. So as we see here, the beast, the seven heads, is actually a, a set of kingdoms that have some that have come, been, and then we got the, the ten horns, which is ten kings that have yet to even receive their power. And what 13 say again? It said that, and the dragon gave to the beast its power and its throne and its great authority. So, we've established something here. Very thoroughly, we've established that Satan has the ability to set up kings and take down kings right now 
in this system. And so, he offers, he controls these governments, no matter what country you're in. No matter if you're in America that thinks that their country was founded on belief in God. No matter if you're in the UK, Britain, Germany, Australia, Austria, the Ukraine. It does not matter where you're at. Your government is Satan's government. They do Satan's will. The corruption is obvious. So... Now, we're going to go over to 2 Corinthians, chapter 2. Start in verse 6, it says, Now we speak wisdom among those who are mature, but not the wisdom of this system of things, nor that of the rulers of this system of things, who are to come to nothing. Notice that. Paul says that the rulers of this system of things are to come to nothing. Hold your places there, because we're going to come back and read another scripture there. But I want to switch over to Daniel, chapter 2, verse 44. It says, Daniel 2, 44, reads, In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. And this kingdom will not be passed on to any other people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms. And it alone will stand forever. So, where Paul says that these rulers will be brought to nothing is because the book of Daniel 2.44 says that God's kingdom is going to crush those kings. So now I want you to read verse 8. It says, in, second, in, first, in first Corinthians chapter 2, pick up back uh, now at verse 8. It says, it is this wisdom that none of the rulers of this system of things came to know. For if they had known it, they would not have executed the glorious Lord. Verse 9 says, but just as it is written, the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard, nor have there been conceived in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. So, again, Paul points out that these governments very clearly have not heard God's word. They do not know God's word. For if they had, they would not have executed Jesus Christ. Okay? So, now, let's go over to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 12. It says, Because we have a struggle not against blood and flesh, but against the governments, against the authorities, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the wicked spirit forces in the heavenly places, Our fight is not between us, meaning you and me, whatever nationality or, or whatever you are, wherever you live at. We're not enemies. But the people that control our lands, the governments that are not God's kingdom, they are the enemy. Now, let's set the record straight. They are the enemy. But as true followers of Christ and worshipers of Jehovah God, we do not raise our hand against fellow man. We do not lift up sword to strike our fellow man. Which means we don't pick up M16s or AK-47s or RPG rocket launchers or whatever else Satan has devised to kill. He has made an art of killing over the years. We don't use those weapons. No. Our weapons are not those weapons, but our weapons are weapons of the Spirit. You could actually read in verse 13, it says, For this reason take up the complete suit of armor from God, so that you may be able to resist the wicked day, and after you have accomplished everything, to stand firm. Okay? Our weapons are weapons of Spirit. Our weapon, really, 
our number one weapon is this right here, the Bible. This right here can change the heart of even the most crooked man if he is willing to listen. So, let's touch on one more scripture. That's in the book of Psalms, chapter 2. I'm going to let this be the scripture to close it out. Because it's a very telling. And the wording in it really matches some of what's happening in our world today. But it says, starting verse 1 of chapter 2, it says, Why are the nations agitated? And the people's muttering an empty thing. What does that mean? Well, agitated, that's very clear. We see that. People, I mean, the ocean is rough. The Bible has referred to the peoples of the earth as oceans, and the waves are great right now. There are people that are going to and fro and left and right, and they're just agitated. They're angry. Their, their, their love has died off. It's cooled off. And they're muttering an empty thing. What could an empty thing be? Well, you remember I pointed out that the beast is the governments. They're part of that beast. So, when you worship the beast, what does that mean? Well, let's think back to Germany. Germany, 1938 to, was it 38 to 45? World War II. Might be a little off when it started, but right around in there. What did, they, what did they tell people to say in Germany? Heil Hitler. Which means Hitler is salvation. Jehovah's Witnesses that lived in Germany refused to say it. And they were beaten. They were persecuted. Then they were rounded up and sent off to concentration camps. And specifically designated with a purple triangle. And they were beaten more severely than even the Jews. And whenever Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide found out what Hitler was doing to their brothers and sisters, they got together and they formed a petition and sent it to the governments of Germany. And Hitler, in a fit of rage, stated he is going to exterminate this brood. But all the while, the churches of the land... Catholic Church, the Protestant Church, the Methodist Church, and all the people in Germany, they stood silent. They stood silent while six million Jews were killed. They stood silent while Jehovah's Witnesses were severely persecuted and beaten and killed. And then, of all things, they worshipped that beast. They raised their hand and said, How Hitler to the Nazi army. You can look and find pictures of Vatican officials blessing Hitler. The unholy alliance that the Vatican had with, with, the, with the governments of World War II, they, they were blessing all sides of the armies. That makes sense to you? Didn't it say in Revelations that the false prophet would cause people to worship the beast? Think about that a minute. False prophet. Well, before we continue with Psalms, let's go ahead and touch that, that false prophet part there because you can find it in 2 Corinthians, starting verse 12 of chapter 11. It says, but what I'm doing, I will continue to do in order to eliminate the pretext of those who are wanting a basis for being found equal to us in the things about which they boast. For such men are false prophets, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself keeps disguising himself as an angel of light. 
it is therefore nothing extraordinary if his ministers also keep disguising themselves as ministers of righteousness, but their end will be according to their works. Now, I want to touch one more scripture before we go back to the book of Psalms. Psalms or Matthew chapter 23, starting verse 27. Matthew 23, verse 27. This goes along with what I just read in 2 Corinthians 11, starting verse 12. It says here, and this is Jesus speaking, he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you resemble the whitewashed graves, which outwardly indeed appear beautiful, but inside are full of dead men's bones and of every sort of uncleanness. In the same way, on the outside you appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. The, 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 the religious leaders of this world are just as guilty as the governments as being part of Satan's system. Because just as Satan sets up kings and kingdoms, so he also sets up kings and kingdoms in the form of religions. And so much as so, as you know, in Revelation, when it talks about Babylon the Great, that she sits a queen. Think about that. A queen. The world empire, false religion. Making people worship the beast. How many times in the last 10 or 15 years have you seen political figures inside of churches talking to the masses? The churches are making people worship the beast. So anyway, let's get back to Psalms now. We're going to finish this off. Picking up now at verse 2, it says, The kings of the earth take their stand, together as one, against Jehovah and against his anointed one. They say, Let us tear off their shackles and throw off their ropes. The one enthroned in heavens will laugh. Jehovah will scoff at them. At that time he will speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his burning anger, saying, I myself have installed my king, meaning his son, Jesus Christ. On Zion, my holy mountain, let me proclaim the decree of Jehovah, he said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will give the nations as your inheritance, and to the ends of the earth as your possession. You will break them with an iron scepter, and you will smash them like a piece of pottery. So now, you kings, show insight. Accept correction, you judges of the earth. Serve Jehovah with fear and rejoice with trembling. Honor the Son, or God will become indignant, and you will perish from the way, for his anger flares up quickly. Happy are those taking refuge in him. I've showed you a very clear case that the kings of the earth, the governments, are not God's kingdom. That they're instilled by Satan. They are controlled by Satan. They are set up and taken down by Satan. So, I'm going to end this video with a question. A question that if many people on the earth will ask themselves, if they would actually listen to the words of God, they could save themselves not only from suffering and hardship, but they could actually save themselves from this system of things. With what I've just showed you concerning the governments of this world and their political systems and their armies, should you vote for them? Should you go out and fight for them in their armies? Should you go out and rally people to vote for them? 
Should you even support them with a thought? Or should you only trust and want and pray for and beg for one kingdom, God's kingdom?